Using the log footage gives you a lot of benefits, such as being able to maximize the dynamic range of the camera that it's shot on, and also to give you more options when it comes to color grading your footage. Using log footage, however, does mean that you need to do a bit of extra work when you're editing your video to get the colors looking correct. If this is your first time editing log footage in DaVinci Resolve, don't worry, it might seem scary, but I'm gonna take you through everything you need to know. In this video, we're going to be using a color managed workflow, which makes things even easier. We're gonna head into DaVinci Resolve, and I'm gonna show you some log footage now. We've got a project here and we've got a couple of clips that were recorded using log footage. Let me just double click on this to open it. We can see this clip is looking very flat and desaturated and that's because it was shot in Sony S-Log3. Out of the box DaVinci Resolve supports log profiles from all of the major camera manufacturers. So let's go and create a timeline. There's essentially three phases to working with log footage in DaVinci Resolve. In the first phase, what we want to do is take the log footage that was shot in the camera and transform that into some kind of color space where we can actually do the color grading that we want. The second phase is that actual color grading or color correction. And the third phase is taking that set of color grading decisions that we've made and transforming them into the output color space. So for example, for YouTube, we're going to be uploading videos using Rec. 709. Also, the top monitor I've got is calibrated to Rec. 709 so I can get a good indication of what changes I'm making to the colors. Using DaVinci Resolve's color managed workflow basically takes care of phase one and phase three for you, leaving just phase two, the actual color grading process for you to worry about. Let me show you how to set that up. So we've got a project with this timeline now and what we're going to do is come up to the file menu and we're gonna come down to project settings here and you wanna make sure you're in this color management tab come up to the Color Science dropdown and change this to DaVinci YRGB Color Managed. Uncheck this automatic color management tick box and then change this color processing mode to HDR DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate. Even though this says HDR in the name, this is also suitable for doing SDR footage. Now select your output color space. In this case, we're going to be editing this video for YouTube, so we're going to choose Rec 709 Gamut 2.4. This setting for the output color space is like the third phase that I just described. This is what we want the final rendered video to be in. And now we've effectively set up what happens in that third phase. The next thing we need to sort out is phase one, and that's mapping the log profile for whatever camera we've used from that log camera color space into a working color space that we can do the color grading in. All you need to do is find the clip in the media pool, right click on it, and then come down to the input color space option. If this footage was shot with Canon using Canon C-Log, I could select this option, or perhaps it was shot on a DJI drone using D-Log. But in this case, I know that this footage was shot with Sony S Gamut 3 Cine S-Log3. We'll just click that, and if I open this clip up, notice now that it's looking a lot more normal. If I use Control Z to undo that, you can see now that we've gone back to this very flat, desaturated footage. We'll just set the input color space back to Sony's S-Log3. So setting this input color space is like that first phase that we talked about. We're going from the camera color space to our working color space. So we'll head over to the color page by clicking the color button at the bottom here. I'm just gonna clean things up a little bit. All of the color grading that you do in DaVinci Resolve happens inside one or more nodes. You can do loads of things in one single node, but it's usually better to have multiple nodes. One node can represent one kind of thing that you're trying to do to the image or one creative idea or technical idea. Because we're using a color managed work, Workflow, we don't actually need any extra nodes to convert from log footage to Rec. 709, for example. That's all being handled for us by the color managed workflow. That leaves us free to concentrate on the actual creative color grading that we want to do. I'm going to show you a very basic way to use nodes for color grading. What we're going to do is right click on this first node. We're going to come and click node label. This allows us to give a custom name for this node. I'm going to call this node exposure. In this first exposure node, what we're going to do is we're going to modify the overall brightness of the image. I'm just going to use the offset here and left click on this kind of bottom wheel. And if I move this to the right, things get bright. If I move it to the left, things get dark. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just going to brighten up this image just a little bit. If you want to reset one of these individual things, such as offset, just click this button here. And if you've made loads of changes, you can reset this whole panel by clicking this button here. And another way is to reset the entire node by right clicking on the node and choosing reset node grade. So let's start off with this exposure. We'll just brighten things up just to open up the image a little bit. Now we could go and make more changes in this single exposure node, but we're going to add a second node now to make some more changes. To add a node after this node, right click on it, 
and come down to the Add Node menu and choose Add Serial. Now we get another node to work with. The output from this exposure node is going to go into the second node where we can make further changes. Just going to right click and choose Node Label and I'm going to call this Contrast. In the contrast node, we're going to be playing with the difference between the light and dark areas of the image to get things looking how we want. There's loads of different ways to change the contrast in DaVinci Resolve. We could come into the HDR palette here, but we're going to stick with this primaries color wheels palette. In this primaries color wheels palette, we've got this contrast control. If I just left click on this word and move the mouse to the right, it increases the contrast. And if I move it to the left, it decreases the contrast. Double clicking on the word contrast resets it to the default value. If you want to, you can also double click on the number and type in a value. But in this case, we're just going to drag until we find a contrast ratio that we like. So now we've sorted out our contrast, we can go and add a third node. And in this third node, we can massage the colors of the image a little bit more. So we'll right click on the contrast node, come down to add node and choose add serial. Now the output of this contrast node will go into this third node and we'll call this color. What I'm showing you here is a simple three node approach to color grading, but you can get as complicated or as simple as you want. There's loads of different ways to change the colors of this image. The first thing we can do is play with the white balance by dragging this temperature left to make things bluer or right to make things warmer. Double click to reset. We can also change the tint to green or magenta, or we can also drag this little dot in this offset here. If you move it up to the top left, things get warmer and to the bottom right, things get cooler. Basically, you can push this around this wheel to change the colors in the image. You double click in this offset, it'll reset that, or you can also use this button here. So I don't mind how this image is looking too much, but if we wanted to cool it off, I could just drag this dot down and to the right a little bit. If you want to temporarily turn off a node to see the before and after, click on the node and use Ctrl D on the keyboard. This is what it looks like without the node active, and this is what it looks like with the node active. So by pulling this dot down to the bottom right a bit, we've cooled off the image a little bit. If you select all of these nodes by dragging over them and using Control D, it will disable all of them. So you can see a complete before and after. Once you've adjusted the colors, you might want to come back to exposure and fine tune this a little bit. So maybe we'll just drop the exposure just a tiny bit before, after, before, after. So that's essentially all we need to do using this approach because the color management pipeline is already taking care of taking all of these color grading decisions we've made and putting them into a Rec 709 color space ready for export. Obviously color grading is just one part of the overall editing process for a video. If you want to learn more about editing, feel free to check out my DaVinci Resolve editing field manual. I'll put a link in the description. Don't forget to subscribe to learn more about DaVinci Resolve. I'm Jason Roberts and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.